Welcome to my lecture online. Now again, when I think about it more and more, I'm beginning to think that that original problem that we published almost 10 years ago was actually not incorrect. It was probably correct. So here we're going to work out this problem and see if that does match what we did the first time around almost 10 years ago to see if it's actually the same type of problem with a good solution. So I don't exactly remember the, the numbers that we're using in the previous problem. I think the big mass was 20 kilograms. The two masses here were equal at 5 kilograms each. It doesn't really matter if it's exactly the same. The methodology should be the same. But the whole idea was that how much force is required to push this system to the right to give it a particular acceleration in such a way that this hanging mass will not be coming down. And it, when you think about it, it almost seems impossible. It says, well, this, this mass is going to have to come down because we have the force of gravity pulling down on it. We have the M2G, and so this is not going to stay in place regardless of what happens because this will be pulled down by gravity as this object moves forward, no matter how much you push it, it's going to come down. So that's at least what we think conceptually, but that's not the case. What we can say is that the tension here let's call it T1, and the tension there, let's call it T2, and since the pulley has no mass and no friction, we know that those two tensions must be the same. So tension 1 must be equal to tension 2. And let's assume that the velocity downward of this mass is equal to 0, which means that the force down must equal the force up, and therefore T2 must equal M2G. So we have T1 is equal to M2G. Then we can look at this force right here and realize that T1 is going to be the force pulling this block to the right, making it accelerate, and so that tension will, equal to, will be equal to the mass and its acceleration, and so we assume that acceleration to be A, and so therefore T1 will be equal to M1A, and so therefore M1A must be equal to M2G. But since M1 and M2 are equal to each other, they're both 5 kilograms, we could say 5 times A equals 5 times G, or A equals G. In other words, the acceleration we need for the whole system would be equal to G, which is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared, in order to keep everything in place. So, if we accelerate this whole object at 9.8 meters per second squared, it will produce enough tension here and enough tension here to keep this mass from going down. So how much force does that require? Well, that means, again, this force here, and I should go for F, right, this force here will be the force needed to accelerate this object, this object, and this object, and then again you may wonder, well, how can this force pushing to the right accelerate this object? Because there's no friction between those two surfaces and no friction between those two surfaces. I forgot to write that down, but no friction anywhere. And so therefore, you'd say, well, how can this block make this one accelerate with there's no friction? Well, it can only be done by this tension, but then you realize that as the rope is situated around the pulley like this, you can see that there's tension on that string which pushes the string against the pulley, the pulley pushes back, the pulley is attached to the block, and so therefore those forces will cause the acceleration of this mass right here. And then we can say that F is equal to M total times acceleration, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, so the force required is equal to the 20 kilograms plus the 5 kilograms, plus the 5 kilograms, all times 9.8 meters per second squared. And so then for, therefore we have F is equal to, that's 30 times that, that would be 29, 4, 294 newtons required then to accelerate the whole system at 9.8 meters per second squared to keep this from coming down. And so it turns out, that the original problem wasn't wrong at all. It was actually correct. It can be done as long as you push it hard enough with enough force to make it accelerate at the right acceleration. In this case, 9.8 meters per second squared. So if the two masses are equal to each other, the acceleration needs to be the acceleration to the gravity for the whole system. And yes, this force will be the cause of all three blocks accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared to the right. 
it is correct, it can be done, and that is how it's done.